trust in him. Yes. I want to know if you really trust him. Some of y'all say you trust him to go through something. Yes. Maybe you really need him. That's it. I want to know if you trust him before you get in something. Right. Like, you had a week like I had, you'd have to trust him. <laughs> you better hear me here, man. I'm telling you. I do not look or feel like what I went through this week. Lord no. have mercy. And I guarantee you, but I still trust him. No. And I'm thankful to have a wonderful wife, man, a loving wife, a praying wife, yes, a wonderful Lord. church family, man. I tell you, man, God is good. All the time. God is good. He's wonderful. He's awesome. Yes. And so um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into this word. But I got to ask you a question. I got an actual question that God has been pulling me to you guys here. The question is, the question is, how bad do you really want? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. How, how, how bad do you really want? Mm -hmm. that, that's the question. Because based off of your action, mm -hmm. if God came back right now, mm -hmm. When you see evidence that you really want. Based off of what you do with your time. And, and, and it ain't about what you do here. It's more or less what you do away from here. Because see, the problem is, is that um, you have to show evidence that you are truly who you say you are. Not based off of what people see you do. But based off of what the God in you reveals in what you do. The Bible says, let your light shine. Oh, it didn't say for you to shine. That, that's where you miss it. It ain't about you shining. Ain't about you getting recognition. Ain't about you getting fame and fortune. He says, let your light shine because it ain't your light, it's the light that he placed in you. That's right. Come on, Pastor. There you go. And so when we're, when we're, the one thing about ministry that get me, I had a talk with someone before we get into this. I had a talk with someone uh, about ministry. Uh, it really uh, vexed my spirit. And I didn't want to get into a debate because when, when God moves you in different spiritual thinking, That's right. you don't get to the point where you get into debates anymore, mm -hmm. with people anymore, mm -hmm. because you see the scripture in a whole different meaning. That's right. um, the scripture in the Bible talks about uh, the lost sheep. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. And had 99, 100, and one went away, right? That's right. The question is, how do you know that one went away? I got in this conversation with my neighbor. I said, the reason why people get messed up because they attach themselves to big churches and not micro churches. Come on, Pastor. Because a pastor don't know you if you had 5,000 strong. That's right. Because you got 99, that means, and I got 100 and one is missing, that means I know the people who show up and who are absent, and I can call and check on you. Amen. But then when you're sitting in an overflow, <laughs> where the church is congested, where the church got people sitting in the pews, they become average, as I said. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go out and do no evangelism, they don't want to go out and do any work for the kingdom, and then they go through this routine, then you don't know if that person is missing. The key thing about small ministry is this. This is critical here. Remember this. It puts your actual flaws and your weakness on display. My God. <laughs> you can't hide in a small ministry because I know what your strength and your weakness is. But see, when you get in those big churches, you can walk around and you can sit there and be with a group of people, but it doesn't mean that you can pray. It doesn't mean that you can teach. It doesn't mean anything. You're just with a group of folks following along. It doesn't mean that you are what you dress like or what you say you are. Mm -hmm. So folks are volunteering to be something you got to acquire a 40. But you sitting there and you just lip syncing. 
But you really ain't getting better, you ain't getting stronger. It is through the small ministries that you develop people. It is where the rubber meets the road. And that's what it's all about. Perfecting people for the work of ministry. And the only way you're going to get better and the only way you're going to grow in ministry is by being transparent in what you are and who you are so that God can work on you to get you to where you need to be. Jesus. That's what it's about. That's why I had to get away from them. Mm -hmm. So where we're going today in the text, uh, coming from Luke 19, you have your Bibles, the son put up the scripture, Luke 19, 1 and 10. I'm talking about a man by the name of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Uh, I'm going to pray after the text. I'm changing. I'm evolving. I get stuck in routine. Scripture reading coming from Luke 19, 1 and 10, coming from the English Standard Version. I'll be using that standard this morning. Everyone there? Say amen. 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 If you're not there, say hold up. Hold up. All right. Got to hold up. Luke 19. Amen. amen. Luke 19, 1 and 10. If you're not there by now, look at the monitors. It says that he entered Jer 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 Jericho. Woo. You're going to Jerusalem already. He entered Jericho and was passing through. This is Jesus. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. Keep in mind when the script defines the scripture defines a person and they're explicit in something about a person, it's something you need to zoom in on. He's a chief tax collector. And so your study should go toward what a tax collector was. Not a tax collector, but a chief tax collector and was rich. Then he says that he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not. On account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in what? Stature. So he ran ahead, climbed up a, into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was about to pass that way. He, being Jesus, was about to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up, said to him, Zacchaeus, uh, Zacchaeus, I need you to hurry and come on down from out of that sycamore tree. For I must stay at your house tonight. So he hurried and came down, Zacchaeus, and received him joyfully, the Bible says. And when they saw it, they all grumble. I always wonder who they was. And the Bible speaks of them. You know, I always talk about what they said. That's they. That's the day right there. They saw it and they all started complaining. And he has gone in to be the guest. And he has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. So they saw it. They complain about, they complain about it. Because he had gone in to become a guest of a sinner. Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. He said, I'm going to give back stuff if I take advantage of some people. No, I shouldn't have done it but I'm going to make it right. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house since he's also is a son of Abraham. All right? And the 10th verse, for the son of man came to seek to save the lost. To seek and to save who? The lost. The lost. The lost. The lost. The lost. I won't take those group scriptures and talk to you from this on the topic this morning, as my son put it up, go ahead and throw it up, son. How bad do you really want it? How bad do you really want it? Show me the word of prayer. Great and mighty God, we come to you right now, Father. We thank you, God, for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, God. So allow your word right now, God, to manifest fresh and new. God, 
Give us all that what we need today, God, as you depart in me for this assignment to be able to bless someone through your divine scripture, God. That whatever we may be going through, whatever we may be dealing with, God, we pray that you give us strength through your word. Give us confirmation through your word. Give us guidance through your word. And allow the Holy Spirit to intercede in those areas, in those places that are hidden to man, but not hidden from you. Allow the actual unction of God, Spirit, to be able to move and reside in us and through us, God, to get us to a better place and where you want us to be. For our desire and our hunger to be uh, quenching and awakened because we really want it and we really want it bad. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. amen. <clears throat> um, Meredith Gray said in the show, uh, Gray's Anatomy, um, too often the thing we want the most is the thing we can't have. Meaning our desires can leave us heartbroken and can wreck our lives by pursuing something that really doesn't want to be pursued. Because when you get attached to something or someone and they start to pull away from you, uh, instead of letting them go, what happens is that we start to bombard them with actual phone calls and unnecessary text messages. Uh, meaning we often place value on people who are too busy for us than people who is willing to make time for us. We, we put value on people who are too busy for us, but not willing to take the time for us. Uh, Eartha Etten, the founder of a dating website, A Little Nerds, has a theory for why she believed that we behave this way. She states that the less someone responds or reciprocates our advances, the more value we perceive that this person to be. Watch this. Meaning many people are being breadcrumbed than being committed to. Oh, wow. <laughs> many people are being breadcrumbed than being committed to. Let me see if I can explain this. Uh, breadcrumbing is when someone Texas or calls you on a sporadic basis mm -hmm. just to get a response out of you. Mm -hmm. Because they are doing and giving you a false perception that they're really trying to pursue you. In reality, they're really not trying to pursue you. They have no intentions of even being tied down with you. So they're constantly breadcrumbing you, giving you Maybe one call out a week, mm -hmm. three calls out a month, mm -hmm. pay a bill from here and there. And you think that you're getting something from them when in reality you are second, third, and fourth place on their actual menu. Jesus. And they're not even concerned about you mm -hmm. because they're breadcrumbing you. Um, and the question that you have to ask yourself in this season is, how bad do you really want it? How bad do you really want that type of relationship or that type of friendship or that type of a commitment that you think that is really a commitment? Mm -hmm. Do you really want a breadcrumb commitment or do you want a real commitment? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to allocate your time to people who have no time for you? Mm -hmm. Come on, man. How bad do you really want it? Are you willing to be someone else left over? and not their number one choice on their menu. Come on. How bad do you really want it? Because being second only means you will always be behind someone else. Jesus. And the problem with people is that they really have started to settle in the society that we're in not to value who they really are. And whenever you start to place more value on other people than you do for yourself, you're simply implying that they carry a greater value when in reality, they just don't want to be with you. Jesus. That's the key. 
And in this text today, we got a man by the name of Zacchaeus. Y'all didn't read it before, Sunday school. He's a chief tax collector, which made him wealthy, a powerful man in Jerusalem, because he gathered revenue for the Roman government. Now keep this in mind now. The job of a tax collector was to consider by the Jews as a, what you call, the lowest type of occupation to have. And something that you really didn't want to have a reputation of doing. Because these men would require, they were required to rob their own people to guess what? To serve their own enemies. And so the name Zacchaeus, which is ironic, the name Zacchaeus meant uh, pure and innocent. But however, the lifestyle that he's having right now was far from being pure and innocent. And so as I get into this text here, the first thing that we have to determine how bad we really want something is that you must leave behind, as my son put it up, those old beliefs that no longer serve you. That's it. There are old beliefs that no longer serve you. What am I saying? Look at verse 4. It says, so he ran on ahead and climbed up into the sycamore tree. And here it is, to see him, for he was about to pass that way. Meaning Zacchaeus sought Jesus so intensely, probably because what he had heard about Jesus was probably something that he'd never heard before. Keep in mind now, Jesus was considered a renegade back then. He's coming up with a, what we call the gospel, the good news. And so he's dealing with people who got a ratchet lifestyle, not a rich and famous lifestyle. And so Jesus was healing and changing the lives of people, giving sight to the blind, and, and all this stuff had a great multitude following him. He was feeding folks and doing all these things. And Zacchaeus probably thought that he never really had a chance of getting his life together. But when he heard that Jesus was coming, he made an actual, uh, I would say, uh, mandatory uh, to get in a position to be able to have an encounter with Christ. Meaning, if you want to move forward in this season, you have to be willing to shed the old beliefs that has kept you in bondage for years. Just because someone told you that this was the way it was supposed to be. Many of us are functioning off of what other people have told us to do. We have yet to find our true identity in who we are supposed to be. Because to say you believe in something without acting in accordance with it is the same as not believing in it at all. <laughs> Let me help you out. Meaning faith without works is dead because what good is it if someone says he has faith but does not have any works from that faith? I'm going somewhere. Meaning when you are really ready for a change in your life, you must start by choosing less by, and not having more. Everyone want more, but you have to start by having less than not having more. Meaning you have to eliminate the people in your life that are only burdening you with their problems. You have to eliminate the people in your life that are not helping you when you're going through your problems. You have to eliminate people in your life that never supported you or offered you anything of value in the direction that God is trying to take you in this season. Because if God can move mountains with a seed of faith, then what do you think he can do with a, just a seed of friends? Come on. And you sitting here thinking that all them folks you got, all them actual, the cliques that you're hanging with, got your back. In reality, you can't get $5 or 15 cents from them Negroes if you really needed something from them. When you start going through some stuff, you really find out who's real and who's genuine. Because they'll close their pocketbooks on you in a heartbeat. They'll shut their phone off you in a minute. Y'all ain't hearing me here. 
and you're sitting here and you wondering, man, this is supposed to be my boo, this is supposed to be my homeboy, this is supposed to be my cousin. I guess what, y'all didn't heard the word Negro before, we recall it before. Because that's exactly what they act like. And so when you're in a situation, you're in a situation when you're in need, you sit there and you allow yourself to fall for those old beliefs, those old ways that has never been beneficial for you in your livelihood. Just because your mama tolerated don't mean you need to tolerate it. Just because your granddaddy did it that way don't mean you need to do it that way. The stuff might have worked for them back then, but it ain't going to work for me right now. You ain't going to call me out of my name. You ain't going to say things about me. You ain't going to curse me out and expect me to give to you when you ain't did nothing for me. Come on. I'm being real this morning here. How, how bad do you really want it? Well, mama said we got to do the No, mama did it that way. I'm in my own house. Daddy said this way. No, dad, I'm doing it my way. That ain't working for me. And you get stuck in those old beliefs and those old habits and those old ways and thinking that it's going to really help you, but it's really not helping you or hindering you. Carl Rogers stated this way. He says that uh, a good life is a process, not a state of being. It is a direction, not a destination. Meaning, living your life through the belief of others can only lead you in the same direction as others. And some of you wondering why you can't get past the folks you've been living with. You can't achieve things that the folks that you've been hanging around. Because you, guess what? You already know what the end state is. They ain't got out of Albany. <laughs> they ain't got out of high school. They ain't got a better education. They didn't get a better job. And you're still practicing those principles and they ain't doing nothing for you. I left home at 17 and went back and the same folks at the gas station asking for spare change is still there asking for spare change when I go back home. Hey, bro. Can you lend me a dollar? Give me, give me 50 cents, give me your spare change. Hold on, doc. It has been 50, almost 50 years, and you still ain't moved? You still asking for spare change? <laughs> and you got to get to a point in your life that you can't allow those old habits to invade your livelihood. Y'all know about it. I mean, why we drove through Carroll going to uh, Tallahassee yesterday, and we were saying, Lord have mercy. At least Carroll looked about bigger than Auburn. <laughs> We gave Carol, we gave them credit. Carol looks bigger than Albany. We ain't not here in Albany. Everything's falling apart. Everything you lose this stuff right here. Because people are dated in their mindset. And they don't want to focus on change. They don't want to evolve. And this place can be a better place, but you got to have a mentality for it to want to be a better place. Robert Burke puts it this way. He says, an old belief is like an old shoe. We value its comfort that we fail to notice that a hole is in it. And some of the stuff people give you got a hole in it. And you're wondering why you keep investing in it. Because it got a hole in it. You put your money in it, man. Before you even move, it's got a hole in it. You didn't try that, that, that plan, that effort, whatever they tried to do. Man, that thing got a hole in it. That thing ain't working for me. And they still tell you, it gonna work, it gonna work. That thing got a hole in it. Stop wasting your time with stuff, all these old traditions and old beliefs that these people are trying to tell you about. Especially when you're talking about uh, on New Year's Eve, uh, you post to cook collard greens, black eyed peas. I told my mother, man, I ain't had to get into it, but I told my mother, I ain't, mom, forgive me. I told my mom, I said, Mom, if uh, uh, you be rich with some collard greens, I wouldn't be working no more. You ever have lines up here at the actual grocery store? These old beliefs. The black eyed peas. <laughs> and y'all been cooking them suckers, and what has happened is you've been getting high blood pressure. That's <laughs> <laughs> that what you've been getting. And you're giving the pharmacists all these dog on pharmaceutical all this money because you've been eating all this collard greens, black eyed peas, pork chop, you name it, all that stuff. And you ain't getting no better. You getting wider, <laughs> but you ain't getting no better. Right. And you got to leave those old beliefs behind. 
got holes in them. So uh, first thing you have to do, you got to get rid of those old beliefs that can't no longer serve you well. Let me move on. The next thing you have to do here is that you have to avoid changing by just addition. Okay. Put your mind on it. Meditate. You have to avoid changing by just addition. Okay, let me see if I can explain this. See, in verse 8, Zacchaeus said that half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. Meaning a sign, a true sign of wanting something bad is when you are willing to give up and not add to what you already have. Okay, okay, okay. Let me help you out. Can I push a little deeper? There's an actual root word for the word decide, mm -hmm. uh, which is called Cartier. That's the root word for decide. Cartier means to kill or to cut, okay? Meaning when you are deciding to do something new without killing something old, it is not a decision at all. It is merely an additional, an addition to what you already have. Meaning you can't add something without losing something. I said that before. Because the problem is that when you're just adding something, then what are you changing when you're adding it to you? Many people think you're adding value by the more education you get. But if you don't drop your hoodness and your streetness and all that mess you got in you, I promise you, you ain't gonna set up in D.C. nowhere and they gonna put you on the front of uh, Essence Magazine or anything. You might be on Essence, but you ain't gonna be on no uh, Wall Street or none of them other stuff. Because you got to lose something in order to gain something. And then, I mean, you can't really change until you're willing to stop doing things that you used to do so that there's proof of you really changing. So you have to stay true to yourself because there are very few people that will remain true to you. Mm -hmm. You got to remember that. So these are two takeaways here. How do you change by avoiding addition? Number one, put it up there, my son. You have to expose your roots. Mm. Lord have mercy. You have to expose your root. It is not good enough to just examine your harvest you must also expose the roots of your harvest. I think I said something right there. Yeah, that, that's your blessing right there. It's not about just what you're getting, but you got to expose the root and how you're getting it. Because when there is proof of bad fruits in your harvest, then that is a sign that there is something connected to a bad thought, a bad attitude, a bad desire, a bad motivations that are lingering in your heart. Mm -hmm. And many people don't realize that that's why they're getting the results that they've been getting over a period of time is that they haven't exposed the true roots that is really inside of them. You keep coming to my man, I'm a child of God. I'm wondering why these things are happening to me. And the problem is that we don't never check ourselves. We always look at checking other people. The first thing you need to examine is yourself. That's what the Bible tells you when you take a communion. He says, let a man examine himself. Because the problem usually isn't someone else. It's usually the individual that's looking at themselves in the mirror. And so you have to expose the roots so that when you get your harvest, if you see anything that is not good fruit, you have to go back and examine what was connected to the way of the reason why this fruit came out that way? Why did I pop off during this actual conversation? Why did my money didn't benefit me in this season and I didn't prosper through a year when the pastor said we were in a year of restoration and blessings, but yet I'm broke and I'm needing more money from the loan company? What, what, what is going on in my life that every time I get a man or a woman that they 
they, they get away from me and, and we always have an issue, a problem. I end up in the same situation over and over again. The problem is that you haven't examined your roots to know why these things are reoccurring and happening in your life. You have to expose the roots because it's in your heart and you may not know it's there until you see the product. It's going through this similar line and all of a sudden it gets to the end and you're trying to figure out, wait a minute, how is this thing not coming out the way the ingredients say it's supposed to come out? It's because, guess what, you're adding something to it and you didn't even know that it was still in you. You're adding something to it. And so in order for Zacchaeus to be taken serious by Jesus, watch this, he had to expose his roots. Lord have mercy by allowing Jesus to see how he would respond around the same people who had taken advantage, he had taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. He had to see it. And until we really want to change, the first thing you have to do is you really have to clean yourself up before you can really be any help to somebody else. You can't help nobody when you're still broken. You can't help nobody when you ain't put in the time and the effort to try to figure out what your problems are, your issues are. It just may not be your season right now until you can figure out what the things are that you need to get in order because it may not take you 60 minutes. It may not take you six months. It may take you a few years. But the bottom line is you have to make sure that you look at the cause of why these things are happening in your life and you examine these things more deeply so that you can get the harvest that God has promised you. Because we are our biggest enemy. Zacchaeus could not receive what Jesus had for him unless he was willing to expose himself to what was hindering him. And until you sit there and examine yourself and find out what is really hindering you, you it's going to stop you from getting to the productivity that you've been looking for in this season. I read a sign a few years back. It says, uh, the person can't be more empty, especially when they're full of themselves. A person can't be more empty, except when they're full of themselves. So we have to expose our root so we can see what our true contents really is. Second thing you gotta do is you gotta look for real opportunities. You gotta look for a real opportunity. Meaning a real change only changes or only occurs when you change your perspective. That's the key. Sometimes the things that God has for you, you can't even see it because you're looking at it the same way. <laughs> you can't see a spiritual blessing with a calm mindset. And God has put the blessing in there, in front of you the whole time. And you've been walking over it, walking by it, and wondering, wait a minute, why are these things, I'm seeing the same thing, I'm seeing the same thing. But it's not the fact that it's not a blessing, it's the fact of how you're looking at it. That same person who's come in your life and tried to help you, and he doesn't look the part, she doesn't look the part, and they don't have the things that you think you need right now, is because you ain't willing to put in the work to get to the things that you really need. That may be exactly what you need to get you to the blessings that you're looking for. Me and my wife's marriage didn't get to where it is because we came out and we were show polished clean. We got there because we put in the work and the effort to get to where it is. Now everybody's looking at it saying, man, y'all are great. But trust me, we weren't great before. And so it's time that you got to put in the work and the effort so that you can see the real opportunity in what God has already blessed you with. The problem is if you don't never change your perspective, you'll never know what you really had. You get mad because somebody else take it and clean it up and made it better, and then you're mad because now you're looking at it from a distance and you're upset that you didn't take the time to put in the effort to make it better for your life when you had that opportunity. That's what's wrong with folks. Our perspectives don't change. We have to change our perspectives. So, this being for a sudden, let me close this thing out. Uh, 
Lastly, right here, the last point is this here. You have to get from among the crowd. Okay. That's it, bro. You have to get from among the crowd. Look at verse 3. It says that he wanted to see who Jesus was. But being a sharp man, he could not because of what? The crowd. Watch this. Meaning Zacchaeus tried every possible angle to see Jesus, but nothing seemed to work because the crowd was blocking his point of view. I want you to follow me here. Meaning the reason why some of you can't see or connect to what God has for you in this season may be because of the people that you're surrounding yourself with in this season. And the same people who were enthusiastic about seeing Jesus were the same people that were upset with Zacchaeus all because Jesus went to be a guest in his house. Don't miss this. Here's your blessing right here. Everyone that is around you don't have your best interests. That's it. Because just because they're cheering for you one moment does not mean that they believe in you. And think that you are deserving when God bless you the next moment. Y'all better hear me here. But this is the key to this text as I close it out right here. And it is that Zacchaeus was a short man. And being short, watch this, seemed to be a problem to him to be able to see things. But it was not a problem for Jesus seeing him in the truth. Y'all don't know what it's shot right there. It was a problem for him to be able to see things. But it wasn't a problem for Jesus to see him in the truth. Y'all ain't got it yet? Zacchaeus never was meant to fit into the crowd. Y'all ain't hearing me. Because he was only noticed by Jesus after he separated himself from the crowd. Y'all ain't here to be And here it is. God never meant for you to fit in. Never meant for you to fit in. Because he created you to stand out. And God told me that when you leave your crowd in this season, this is when you will be able to stand step into better opportunity that he has for you in this season. Because you were unable to see them because of the people that you were around. Jesus. They were blocking your view. So the question you have to ask yourself if I get out of here is how bad do you really want it? Are you willing to cry the sycamore tree so that Jesus can see you? How bad do you really want it? Are you willing to keep relying on those same old beliefs and traditions that people have been feeding you for years? How bad do you really want it in this season? Because in order for you to be able to have the opportunities that God has for you in this season to be revealed to you, you're going to have to get from among the people who's blocking you from seeing it in this season. You got to get from among the crowd. Zacchaeus was willing to give up what he had so that he could receive what Jesus was giving. The question you got to ask yourself is that, are you with someone in this season that is willing to give up something to help you to get to where you need to be? Think about it. Are you willing to stay in that long? How bad do you really want it? Is it enough for you to step away? Is it enough for you to move in a new direction? If it's enough for you to actually believe that God has something that he's going to provide all that you need in this direction that you're heading? Because you won't be able to be put on notice until you step away from the crowd. But keep in mind in the text, when you step away from the crowd, 
The Bible says that they grumble about it. People gonna have issues with you when you step away from them. People gonna have problems with you when you start stepping into the direction that you're supposed to be stepping. If you ain't hearing nothing about you, that means you ain't heading in the right direction. If you ain't hearing nobody saying anything about you, that means you ain't moving in a promising direction. You got to step away from the crowd. You ain't meant to fit in. Why you don't call me no more? Uh, I got some other things I'm working on right now. Because my pastor said I got to get away from them old beliefs because they got holes in them. They're not helping me in this season. And you got to get to a place right now. You got to ask yourself, how bad do you really want it? How bad do you really want it, E.I.? Join me in a word of prayer. As you stay seated. Oh, great and mighty God, we come here right now, Father. We thank you for your word today. As we meditate on this message, God, for the parts that's relevant to those who are going through things and dealing with things, God, challenge them in the area of how bad they really want it, how bad they're willing to step away from certain things, how bad they're willing to invest in new things, but also to get rid of some of the old things. God, guide their path this morning, God, and allow them to become transparent. Allow that real opportunity that has been hidden for years to be revealed to them, God. Allow the scales to come off their eyes, God, for them to be able to see the blessings that you have restored upon them, God. Help them, Lord. Keep them, Father. And as they go on their way, as they depart from this place today, God, allow them to have confirmation and revelation in their actions through application and allow this word to be the illumination to lead them to greater. Because in the end, God, you will get the glory. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Give God some praise in the house. Now, give God some praise in the house. 